So was Professor Liv here biracial or not in the end? We really don't know. We leave off this movie with so many unanswered questions and not in a good way. guys welcome back to my channel it's tyra here with another struggle review here to discuss master now this movie is from 2022 and it stars regina hall now before we get into all things universities tradition legacy racism curses witchcraft and just people downright getting on my nerves i need you guys to drop down and subscribe to my channel and like this video i'm going to give you guys a moment to do that then we're going to come back and discuss did this movie have potential or did it just potentially waste our time? Time that we could never get back. Go back, 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 back. guys have hopefully subscribed to see more of me let's get into this movie but before we jump into the video i have to give a shout out to the person who paid for and requested this film so if you happen to watch your back and look over your shoulder while walking through your college dorm it's not because of me it's because of this person right here thank you so much for supporting me and paying for this content now this movie was written and directed by Mariama Diallo. I really hope I'm saying that correctly, who I am mostly familiar with for her works on the HBO show, Random Acts of Flyness. Check it out if you haven't. And based on her other works that are shorts like Hair Wolf, which I've seen, White Devil, and also having a co-producer credit on episodes of The Other Black Girl, she has a tendency of wanting to mix racial undertones with horror elements, the suspense, the thriller, and the social commentary, definitely putting you in the mind of movies like Get Out. Opening the floodgates for movies like this one, Antebellum, The Them series, Alice with Kiki Palmer, Bad Hair, The Ladies Candyman film, you know, medium to mid-range type stuff, some not so good. <laughs> Then you have really, really good stuff like Sorry to Bother You, His House, and the very, very recent They Clone Tyrone, all shedding light on the Black experience and often what it's like to be othered. It could be done subtly, consciously, or it could just be overtly in your face trauma. Getting into this movie with the poster and the title, master and you see those lashes i had so many little expectations for this film <laughs> as far as what the word really means of course you can be a master academically and have a degree or be master at something be highly skilled be the master as far as jeffrey is concerned master william you can be wealthy and a part of high society or you can be a master ownership over people aka massa Above all else, whether I enjoyed this movie or not, this is a breakout for Miss Regina Hall. We don't typically get to see her in more serious roles. Now watching this, you know, I instantly was like, why they put that wig on Regina? <laughs> why they put this wig on Regina? A good wig, I may add, very, very good wig. It did look natural, but I was like, why? She uh, is not really dolled up here. We're not really getting into the beauty. We are taking on this different appearance to really just dive into focusing on her acting capabilities, whether it is this movie or Honk for Jesus or Honk if you love Jesus, one of those. Why she gotta bring that over here? You know, we love a good Brenda moment. <laughs> or, you know, just being the beautiful, sexy, romantic love interest in a film. Here, she really has to carry the intense subject matter of this movie by herself along with our other lead, Zoe Renee. Both of them did really, really well here in this film with what they were given. 
Now we meet Jasmine Moore, who is quiet, meek, a little passive in her demeanor, freshman at Ancaster University, who just merely wants to fit in, along with Gail Bishop, who's appointed first black master at the university. They are two of the few black faces on this predominantly white campus outside of the staff who are mostly there in roles of servitude. Ancaster University priding itself on being one of the oldest schools in America. It's all about history, tradition, and legacy, but we are so committed to that, that things like our old slave quarters, black face trinkets, whatnot, and so much more are still very much so intact. Like the fact that we have Regina Hall's Gail try to get into her housing section and she has the key but it isn't working. The door doesn't technically open until she calls as if she has to get permission. Even when you have a key to the residence, you are not welcome until we physically decide to let you in. Or the fact that we have Jasmine going to get lunch and the cafeteria lady is giving off mammy and yeah, oh yeah, it was, it was very, <laughs> it was very, you know, servant. There are so many things right off the bat that tell them that you don't belong here, you never will belong here. Following them as they try to settle into everyday life, it becomes more ominous, isolating, unsettling. We have Jasmine, the admitted sleepwalker. I don't know why they threw that whole story in there. When everything, most of the time, is just chalked up to was or wasn't this actually real? Is she awake or is she having a nightmare? But she is made to feel like an outsider majority of the time, not only by her roommate, but by most of the other students on campus. Always overbearing, condescending, rude, always reminding her that she's the only black person in the room. Seth Room being a cursed one. That was probably the part of the film where I was kind of, eh. Students believing in a legend of the school being cursed by this witch who went out Salem witch trial style, if you know what I mean, that haunts, torments a selected freshman before killing them like the very first black undergraduate student from the 60s who just happened to also occupy the same room as Jasmine. Jasmine does feel like this same entity has targeted and is following her, causing her to see things that maybe aren't there or have nightmares that might just be her reality. Now, when we have Jasmine who is threatened mentally, physically, emotionally by this witch, but also by many of the other white students on the campus, we have Gail who is also given this menacing energy around her, mostly when she is within her own home on campus, but it's under the umbrella of remember. Remember who you are and what people like yourself have represented on this campus then and now. We have once again those slave quarters that are very much so still intact. She begins to see maggots as if there is this infestation rooting there. Every ounce of evidence that she could ever need of the kind of place that this is. We even go as far as Gail eventually having a whole manifestation vision of seeing a physical slave in the attic area. Unlike Jasmine, who takes all this in, begins to worry, begins to kind of drive herself towards insomnia and really trying to dig to justify and figure out what's going on, Gail ignores everything. <laughs> Gail acts like nothing is going on. She never mentions it. We are too busy ignoring it to get along, to be content with this spot. Gail is very much so, I worked really hard to get to where I am and nothing is gonna distract me from it. We hear her reference my home, this is my home, this is my spot. Gail has clearly had a life of just smiling and being complacent and as you know, black women, we are supposed to have this eerie element of doubt and feeling this discontent of not belonging. They're supposed to, you know, throw those microaggressions our way or feel like we can't have discernment or maybe we can't shed light on this matter because we are a black woman. That's just the way life goes. 
don't worry about any of that because what truly matters is me being here, the positive work I could do here as the first black woman in this position. I am going to change something. I am gonna be a shoulder for women like Jasmine to lean on. In the end, I did feel like it was a metaphor for the type of woman that Gail was. She is a woman of a certain age in a certain place as far as education, moving throughout her life, probably being treated a certain way and becoming numb to it. And this was a metaphor for that because without that that just absolutely wouldn't make any sense why she wouldn't say anything but just like with a lot of this movie and its characters you don't get a lot of resolution because when we get into jasmine who we spend a lot of time with i think the movie does a disservice to her character because we don't really know anything about her to connect with her more so upper class background she's from the suburbs graduated you know top of her class but i needed more as to why when she first arrives on campus Campus, which we don't say anything about she immediately straightens her hair it's as if she is trying to conform like has she been surrounded by predominantly white students and counterparts throughout the entirety of her life you know I needed something like that you know where are her parents you know when incidents occur like mama rolling out the window and nobody rolling up to see about their child I need to know what's going on when the Thanksgiving holiday break occurs and she opts to stay on campus rather than go home when she she decides to have a moment of calling home and she's pretending that everything is hunky-dory with her roommate as if she isn't scared out of her mind that's never really elaborated on and we needed those things to fulfill and identify with a character like Jasmine because it was almost giving uh you know first generation graduate I can't fail you know I have to put up this facade a lot of people are counting on me like we just pieces of the puzzle that we shouldn't have to put together because they weren't there to begin with like elaborate and why are you allowing all of these people to disrespect and talk to you any kind of way and then we have our other characters like Jasmine's roommate in Professor Liv. Roommate Amelia is here to just be suspect going from mean maybe little jealous girl energy to outright telling Jasmine that she hates her after she kisses a boy that she has a crush on not too long after that Jasmine wakes up to a noose being left on her door along with the words leave being carved into it. Now this deep rooted hatred that she begins to develop for Jasmine in combination with the nightmarish figure, Jasmine seeing things, the hands around her neck, this ominous vibe of something is coming for you and getting closer and closer. The curse, the witch, the legend is coming to get you. I thought <laughs> the roommate was maybe being possessed by this spirit. We have too many coincidences of Jasmine waking up and the roommate standing over her. And the room like, oh my God, like she's just, it's like she was doing something. So I was like, is she being possessed? Is she, it's like, no, that's not at all what's happening. We completely drop that with Amelia and we transfer over into Gail happening to catch Amelia in the woods with boys and you know maybe she was inebriated that something happened that you didn't want to happen was Amelia you know allowing a choo-choo situation for popularity she's feeling you know it's just really unclear but she tells Gail you know oh I don't want to make a report of this I don't want to go to the doctor I can't go through this again and it really doesn't even go in you I was like why are we here not wanting to go through that again or for everybody to you know get, get into the shame that comes along with her maybe wanting to co file a complaint on what maybe or maybe didn't happen to her in those woods with, with those boys she just you know leaves and that's it yeah. the purpose of the roommate was just to be threatened and feel inferior merely by jasmine's presence and her blackness Although it's ever present throughout the whole story, almost every time she sees another white person, you know, I got hoes calling your phone. Hey, where's Ali with the muck? Yo, I'm sorry, it's my song. 
the whole scene, you know, at the frat party, it is as if they made it their business to surround her, blatantly sing Mo Bamba and say the N word. It's just, they are scared merely of her presence. The letter left behind in the bathroom, you know, don't leave your hair in the sink. You get more of the presence of the witch. They were trying to tie those things together, but it just really wasn't handled well enough, in my opinion, for you to make those clear connections. And then we have our Professor Liv character, who is pretty much a uh, retelling in its own way of Rachel Dolezal's story passing as a black woman on a college campus being all into activism to the point that she is appointed president of a chapter of the NAACP only for everyone to later find out that she is actually white and has two white parents always advocating for blackness and its lacking presence within the college campus, wearing her African prints, teaching critical race theory with her box braids and baby hairs to match, Liv supposedly having a secret identity, escaping from this Amish community, creating a new life for herself to where she could be a legit professor and hopefully gain tenure on this campus. All the while is she passing and fully white or the product of her white Amish mother secretly sleeping with a black man, making her biracial and also giving her this complex to where she wants no connection to that community. Now to Gail, Liv can identify with her also being black in these spaces. She's an ally, she's a friend, and she's a fellow sister. Cause you know what sister got to stick together. Now to Jasmine on the other hand, she is very biased and unfair between her and another white student showing less work ethic but getting a higher grade causing Jasmine to side eye her and file a formal complaint threatening the tenure that Professor Liv covets oh so badly. Now for me I feel like she was passing the whole time. Them lives were too thick and ready to go and she was reveling in them. The little condescending racially undertone things that she was doing to Jasmine that was clearly unfair. I felt like that was a giveaway. Also lying to the likes of Gail when she didn't necessarily have to. Like if you gonna lie about the itty bitty small stuff child, what else are you lying about? Then we get into that overcompensation to express the blackness and you know real last give up about a nigga like you oh it's gonna be collard greens and cornbread and yams at the thanksgiving dinner you know the word it's just it was a little overt and then when we get into gail coming to confide in her after a party after she's been made to feel othered in this room Liv's choice of words of her, oh, you felt like a house, like it was the house eh, with the hard ER, like, we'll be saying that. <laughs> I don't feel like we, you know, we be saying that. There were so many giveaways, in my opinion, that she was not who she says she was. Then we get over into the side of maybe she was telling the truth and her mother has made her to feel ashamed of who she is because she does have some black blood in her. Where I don't know who I am, where I belong, leaning more into the blackness, I'm gonna feel the need to overcompensate because I'm unsure of so many other things. Especially with the way the movie goes about her actually receiving tenure and her just being okay with it. Once we have Jasmine make that complaint against Liv and she does confide in Gail, but Gail is feeling a bit indecisive because she does see Liv as a friend and that maybe she wouldn't do that to where she feels like she can't really outrun it anymore. Trying to, she pretty much throws herself out of a window trying to escape this presence, ending up in the hospital where we have a conversation with her and Gail. Jasmine mentally and physically hurt and bothered beyond her capacity, wanting to leave. Gail kind of talking her down off the ledge as in to say, 
you can't outrun this. It's gonna always be present, thinking that she is just solely being bothered by what seems to be racism on the campus that is affecting her. Is she the only black student on the campus? No, she's one of eight. We do actually have one reach out to her and tell her, you know, it's not all in your mind, the things that you are feeling. Matter of fact, we have a gathering support group which she opts not to go to after one of the white students pretty much calls it stupid once again getting into her wanting so badly to fit in but you have Gail saying always like it's the presence is going to be there for the rest of your life your experience is a shared one amongst a lot of us black women so it's no use in you trying to outrun it. It's always going to be there. So worn down to think that these things are okay and this is just the way it is. Maybe if you fight hard enough, you might be the change within that system when they finally let us in. Look at me. At this point, when Gail ignores it and we're like almost at the ass end of the movie, I was like, okay, has this just been a metaphor this whole time? <laughs> Has this been a metaphor for racism this whole time and I just missed it? Cause that's pretty much what I got from it and would maybe make the movie make more sense. Even though it low key doesn't because this entire time we have fed into the allure and mystery of this witch. We have her continuing to read this diary of the student who pretty much suffered from the same fate. I was like, it has none of that happened at all. And this has strictly been one big metaphor. I could never outrun this. This is always gonna be there. But am I mentally prepared to deal with that all my life the way that Gail seemingly has? Jasmine takes herself out in the way that this witch has been stating that she was gonna take her out all along. And we have Gail find her body. Now, if this was all supposed to be one big metaphor and none of those things actually happened and this was just supposed to be a placeholder for racism, I don't think that the 333 reference would be there. We have her cling to this diary of the past student that suffered the same fate as Jasmine in the same way at the same time in the same dorm like there's just too many supernatural elements there for this to just be a metaphor due to this tragic incident professor Liv, who has been a little wish-washy on whether or not she would get tenure or if she deserved it gets this pretty much off of the back of Jasmine's death in this university not wanting to deal with any more bad press. Let's do something nice for one of the few black presences that we have on this campus and give her tenure. We don't need any more discriminatory situations here. Which she's all too damn happy about in the end, by the way, leading us to a very sad girl in the end finally finding out Liv's true identity and Gail confronting her at the party about her being a fraud. You've been lying to me and everybody else here about who you truly were. Matter of fact, you guys are so self-absorbed in absence of what true blackness is that you didn't even recognize that the likes of a Liv who is a passing white woman was able to infiltrate this campus, be your diversity hire, and pose as representation this entire time. She's fake, never cared about the situation, and never really cared about Jasmine. As well as everybody here, I was never brought here to be the change. I was only brought here to be a maid. The help, not much unlike the slave and the maid imagery that she keeps seeing throughout the movie. I was never gonna be the change, nor is anybody else going to be. The tradition and the effery that has been going on at this school will always remain. And I think we also get that with what I am assuming are the older masters who used to be over the school kind of partaking and partying 
with the ones that are their current day and you can't really tell them apart. Nothing is ever gonna change here, no matter what I do. The best thing I could do, what I've been trying to avoid all along, is to stop fighting against the grain and completely remove myself from this situation. Coming to terms with the idea that she did have an opportunity to sway and maybe save Jasmine from her fate, Heartbroken at the fact that Jasmine not only lost her life, but she will probably haunt me for the rest of mine. Now, before her grand exit, we do take a moment after. Now, before her grand exit, Liv gives this whole spew about her actually being biracial. You don't know my life. You haven't lived it, blah, blah, blah. Proceeds to put on her black cloth hooded situation, much like the witch that had been following, spirit that had been following Jasmine around, once again, getting more into the supernatural ooh ooh allure of, was it lived this entire time antagonizing Jasmine? <laughs> was it her this entire time antagonizing her to have this situation occur for her to get tenure? Like, I just I just really didn't like any of that. <laughs> they could have kept that on the floor. Of course, we proceed to have Regina actually quit. Once she is being approached by a security guard, uh, y'all all look alike to me. I need to check your identification and nobody else's because you're one of the few black people in these spaces. We won't have black people around these parts, even though she has been the master for who knows how long have you not seen me anywhere. I need to see your ID. You know what? No, you don't. Matter of fact, I don't work here, nor do I belong here as she proceeds to walk off. Um, uh, <laughs> this movie is uh, an indecisive type of situation for me. I don't really know if I enjoyed it, if I didn't. I'm somewhere really in the middle. It felt like it had something to say, all while kind of low-key saying nothing at all. A mix up of one too many things and not really having a strong vocal point to me. I think it wanted to shroud some doubt and mystery over the movie to not really lend itself to giving you any answers in the end and kind of letting your mind make up its own things and wonder, but it just really didn't do a good job of that. It kind of felt like wasted potential, but I did also like the fact that it wasn't giving trauma P-O-R-N situation and like the discretion with moments like Jasmine unaliving herself and them not showing it or, you know, you know how they be doing. <laughs> but uh, would I watch this again? Probably not. Do I want to go and try to figure, mm -mm, I'm good on that. This is enough. Well, you guys, that was my review for Master. I hope you enjoyed it. Please drop down and tell me if you did. Once again, this is one of those good old movies where I feel like a lot of opinions are to be had and someone else could see something that you didn't. Whole bunch of different answers could come from this. I would love to drop down and be able to read them. I look forward to doing that as well as you guys supporting me, liking this video, sharing this video, showing your girls some love because you know that I need it. I'll see you guys next time for my next review. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>